long line of newly created Varlamore only accounts to the East Gate, where you can take- Okay, Jagex, you caught me. This is Varlamort, my Varlamore locked ultimate Iron Man. Varlamore is a brand new city in old school RuneScape. This city brings tons of new content to the game. So to break this new continent in, I made a fresh ultimate Iron Man. This account cannot bank or trade. Every item will be sourced from the continent of Varlamore. Varlamort's goal? to complete every piece of content this island has to offer. This includes obtaining the best in slot armor and weapons. To gain access to Varlamore, you have to complete the Children of the Sun quest. It's a super easy quest, it takes like 5 minutes, with no requirements needed. It's March 20th and Varlamore was just released. There is currently no information about this new continent at all. It is a great time to be a scaper. And there will be another Varlamore expansion this summer. Damn, this is kind of beautiful. I am so proud to call this my home for the next seven years. I am not gonna keep anything from Tutorial Island, and my first order of business will be to just explore. I wanna see what is around, what shops there are, what items I can get. Eight attack levels and about 963 clicks later, I have defeated the dummy once and for all. Okay, Mr. Blacksmith, what do you have for me? Oh, I lo oh my god. An Addy Skimmy, Addy Plate Legs, and Plate Body. That might just be our best in slot gear for a very, very long time. Citizens and Taurus are a new addition to RuneScape. They require one thieving to pickpocket. They added a lot of new thieving content, and I can't wait to train my thieving and try them out. Ooh, look at these fashionscape choices. Oh, I'm gonna go with the red one. Not because I'm broke, but <laughs> obligatory. This is a really cool addition. These shops have unlimited stock, and the jugs of wine, stew, and meat pie are a great food source for me early on. I believe I read that some of these beers have temporary stat boosts, and if they do, that would be so big. I'll test them out when I have uh, more money. There is a rune mace in this shop. Normally a trash weapon, but for this account it might have some niche uses. Even better though, there are sand crabs on this island. A huge discovery! They're level 15 and have 60 hit points. They are really AFKable and great for early combat training. Ooh, a plank spawn! I can actually train construction! There is a house agent in the city, but I need 40 magic to teleport to the house. Oh my god, oh my god, it's a steel sword spawn. Oh, it's a free weapon! Yo of course they're- oh my god, I have to go all the way around. I hate you sometimes, Jagex. This is where greatness begins. Until I get at least 50 thieving, collecting these steel swords and selling it to the sword shop just might be my best money maker. It's time we have that talk. Since very little is still known about Varlamore, I wanted to make as few exceptions as possible, unless absolutely necessary. To access a vital part of Varlamore requires completion of the Perilous Moons quest. This quest opens up the entire continent for me. However, it requires 48 Slayer, 20 Hunter, 20 Runecrafting, 20 Fishing, and 10 Construction. I will 100% be lamping Hunter to 20, as that is my only way to 20 Hunter. But I want y'all's feedback. There is a way to get 48 Slayer without gaining combat XP on the mainland. And this will be the account's only major exception, as lamping to 48 Slayer could take 5 plus years. And Slayer is impossible to train on Varlamore, and it locks some of the best content for me. Without it, this series is dead. Runecrafting is another impossible skill, but with a level 20 requirement, lamping it isn't too bad. But since runecrafting is currently dead content on Varlamore, should I make the runecrafting mainland exception? Slayer and runecrafting would never be touched again after the quest. And by the time I lamp to 20 Hunter, the Varlamore expansion should be released, and I will definitely wait until then to make a final decision. As for mainland quests, I've decided on Druidic Ritual to unlock the Herblore skill, Rune Mysteries to potentially lamp runecrafting, and Eagle's Peak to eventually be able to complete the At First Light quest. I will do Druidic Ritual and Rune Mysteries now, and every other exception won't be set in stone for months. Everything looks so good on Varlamore. This is the place that I need the Perilous Moons quest to access. But it's day of release, so I'm sure there's a bug that will let me in, right? These wealthy citizens are another new addition to the game. They have the first ever auto pickpocketing mechanic, 
They also have a chance to give you house keys, which you can invade a house and get valuables for some extra gold. Once I get 99 thieving, I will be rich. I decided to get some easy levels while brainstorming for this account. There is a range right next to this chicken pin. I trained combat, prayer, and cooking all at the same time. And I'm keeping these feathers, I'm sure they'll have a use at some point. And not having a bank means I will have to be very resourceful with my inventory slots. Ooh, an iron knife spawn in the Hunter's Guild. This is huge, actually. Free and easy range XP? Say less. But unfortunately, that is the only good thing about the Hunter's Guild right now. It is completely locked until I get 46 Hunter, which I won't be able to get until I complete the Perilous Moons quest. Underneath that mountain I showed you earlier is Cam Torum. It's an underground dwarf city with a bunch of content for this account. In Cam Torum is the Nepotsli Dungeon. This dungeon will have my only hunter training method. Ooh, a pickaxe and a bunch of construction supplies. I won't have to use planks to train construction. That is good news. And it looks like there's a bunch of different ores here. I can mine clay from level 1 and slowly make my way to 55 for the mithril. Ooh, I just found a secret dungeon. Interesting. Yo, there is no way. All of these iron arrows just here for me to pick up. This is free range XP. I know there are logs on this island and I can make a short bow, but to be honest, I didn't really see any other trees. I think I saw a yew tree, but if that's the case, I'll have to get 70 fletching for my next bow upgrade. Ooh, what's over? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh no, don't die. Please don't die. Oh, these things attack super fast. What the? Oh, if I die now, I am quitting. I'm quitting RuneScape. Stop it. Stop it. I have no run energy. Yo, if I didn't have these jugs of wine, I would be so dead. Oh my god. It is time for some thieving training, you guys. I actually didn't know that you could get seeds from regular farmers. I'm getting some potato seeds, which will actually jumpstart the farming grind. But there is a master farmer on this land, which is super good for the future of this account. I won't have to rake farming patches like other region locked accounts. First Varlamore locked armor upgrade. I'm gonna train to 30 in my combat stats and work towards getting full adamant. There is a helmet shop with an adamant full helmet and this will actually be my best in slot armor for months. Maze randoms are super important for this account. The rewards from the maze are powerful, and the chests around the maze give me air runes, and air runes will be very hard to come by for this account. Guards have a 1 in 64 chance of dropping 6 air runes, but I will need thousands of these to get 40 magic for the teleport to house spell. There is an estate agent in Varlamore, but there is no house portal, so this will be my only way to train construction, and I will need 10 construction for the perilous moon quest. Ya boy has been working. 30, 30, 30, 30. Oh, it looks so clean, guys. I can finally use my best in slot adamant armor. It's just the helmet, plate body, and plate legs, plus the skimmy, but that's gonna cost about 30k, so I'm gonna test out a few different money making methods I've had in mind. Aha, you guessed it. Picking up steel swords and selling them to the general store. They are 130 GP each. I should make about 3.2k from selling all of these steel swords. And thank god there's a little passageway underneath the city, I don't have to walk all the way around. And this is the final sword, we're looking at about 7k. That was not too bad, it only took maybe 10 minutes to collect the swords and sell them. Previously I was just pickpocketing farmers for money, I mean I get XP and money at the same time, that's perfect right? But. It's kind of slow, GP and XP per hour, and I get hit all the time, so I'm just gonna thieve this stall, and actually there's a silk stall right above here, which will be, oh, this will be perfect. And I don't see a lot of guards here, like in Artie. This is gonna be really good, actually. I think I'll do this till 50 thieving, and then I unlock the wealthy citizens, which will be amazing money an hour. Hold up, you know I gotta buy this Addy Skimmy first. Oh, it's only 2k? I thought it was like 7k. Wow. Varlamore rocks! Y'all are about to witness history. The first ever full adamant Varlamore sourced adamant armor set. 
I collected and sold steel swords for about an hour and a half, and I got 27k. 16k for the plate body, 6k for the plate legs, and 5k for the full helm. <sighs> Here we go. Oh my god. Varlamort is stacked, you guys. Best in slot armor for months to come. Make sure you guys subscribe, because in the next episode, the grind will be insane. I don't know how I'm gonna do it or how long it'll take, but it will be horrible, but hopefully fun to watch. Like, subscribe, comment for Varla more content. <laughs>